everybody, Craig Lemire here, Moss Studios. Um, this month my article is all about lighting patterns. You know, I get asked all the time by photographers, you know, what are some of the things that I should learn to be better, or what is the one thing that I should learn in order to be a, a better portrait photographer. And in my opinion, uh, is lighting patterns. I really believe that knowing your lighting patterns, the good and the bad of them, will help you so much. You know, once you understand what those patterns do and why they do what they do, you will literally be able to create anything that pops in your head. Uh, you know, to me, it's more about organization than it is uh, anything else. You know, once you understand your lighting patterns, you're going to go like, hey, I want this type of pattern and this type of pattern, and I'm going to create this look. I'm going to take two of these patterns and this look, I mean, in this pattern, and create this look. And so for me, it's really organization. Once you can understand those patterns, you can organize your shoots any way you want. So in the article this month, I talk about split lighting. You know, split lighting is when you, you literally split the body or the face in half with light. One size dark, one size light. You know, to me, that's a very bold and powerful uh, lighting pattern. You know, you're going to use that if you want more of a badass image. You know, if you want an image that's more stoic or more proper, to me, we're going to use a Rembrandt pattern. You know, we're trying to create that triangle light, you know, underneath, uh, on the cheek, underneath the eye. And I talk about how to go ahead and do that. You know, if I want to create an image that is, that's, that's more bright and that, that it's more, I would call, I guess, fluffy, airy, you know, I would probably use a butterfly pattern or I'm going to use a loop light pattern. You know, let's say that, that I have someone that has really dark hair and I have a dark background and I don't want to lose the hair, you know, in the background. So what I'm going to do, I'm, going to, I'm either going to put a hair light, which is a separator, or I'm going to shoot another light, a kick light, on the background. That's how I'm going to separate. You know, same thing, let's say I really want to accentuate the side of a person. You know, I'm going to bring, you know, a, a grid uh, with, a, I mean, a strip light with a grid to the side and I'm going to rim light that person. Uh, and so in an article, I go through all of the lighting patterns that I use and my thought process behind using those patterns and especially the when you should and when you shouldn't uh, use those type of patterns. So I really hope you get something out of the article. Uh, I would implore you, it's so easy to go find lighting patterns. You know, if, if there's not enough content in, in my article, go out and just Google lighting patterns and a million things will come up. You know, these patterns have existed way before the camera did. You know, people were using these patterns to create mood when, they're, when they were just painting them. You know, this is where they come from. So, like I said, they've been around a long time. They're there for a reason. And once you understand them, they're going to help you and your photography out so much. Uh, so, have a fantastic uh, month. I'll talk to you guys later.